And we're back. What's going to be the final game of our lower bracket finals? One of these teams advances, keeps their hopes for a ticket to Seattle alive. The next, or the other, the loser, I should say. Well, they leave with a broken yep. heart and a whole year to look ahead to going through all of this again. Yeah. That game was intense, man. It was back and forth. The graphs looked like an EKG. I mean, just mm -hmm. up and down and up and down. But in the end, I mean, again, we talked about it kind of towards the end of that game. There was really nice play coming out of Union Gaming, no doubt about it. But just as much as anything, it seemed like there were a few down-the-stretch mistakes, just some poor positioning. We saw, um, we, we saw Sneaky Nick's Assassins overextend a couple of times. And, uh, you know, this is where their experience has to come into play. They have to be able to shake that off and come into this and look to repeat the dominance they showed us in Game 1. Yes, they definitely do. And for both these teams, they're saying this is their last shot. Yeah. Like, it's going to be, it's heartbreaking going to a third game and losing it, especially. If you get destroyed 2-0, you're like, okay, maybe we didn't deserve it. But coming to such close games, it's definitely a lot harder on the teams as well, coming to a loss like this. But yeah, Sneaky Knicks Assassins is another team that they just need to l make less mistakes. Because Union's a team that capitalizes off mistakes. Right. They seem to feed off mistakes. If you don't m make mistakes, they seem to be in shambles. They don't know what to do. So they need to minimize their mistakes, and I think they have a very good shot of taking this game. Well, the draft's already underway, so we're going to go right on into it, take a look at how things are shaping up again for this make-or-break game for both teams. We can see it's a tree and protector shadow demon picked up Ten initially for Union Gaming. The bad rider and the nature's prophet making it through and being picked up by Sneaky Nick's Assassins. As we wait for the rest of the band phase to play out. Something you and I talked about off camera just after the game, you know, we're all kind of hyped and we're, we're running yeah. on adrenaline. drill and we want to continue talking about it. We saw uh, Ewo. And we kind of both talked about how it, it was only – you don't want to knock him down. It's not as if he had a terrible game. He didn't. But in most of the wins we've seen Union Gaming have, he's been the main influencing factor. Right, and in yeah. this game, it was almost as if he was on board the train that the supports were driving. You know what I mean? It felt like uh, the play of Zendrils in particular was very, very good. Angel actually came online and was a big playmaker down the stretch yes. as well. And uh, even though uh, Iwo – or uh, we were actually discussing that, mm -hmm. how you actually pronounce it. Iowa, Iwo, Iwo, whatever. Oh. Um, he's been, he is the heart and soul of this team. And uh, it, was it has to be he's really encouraging time. for Union that it wasn't so much that he was carried, but they helped him out so much in that game as the game went later and later. Yeah, it's really scary knowing, like, he, for us, we called him, he's their star player, right? Yep, and he doubt. has, like, a bad game, and his team picks up the slack. And that's very important for a team to succeed. That's like what you need in a championship team. You can't just have one player doing everything for you. You right. need players to pick you up when you're having a bad game. And Union Gaming did just that. Yep. They dug absolutely Dyer deep. And, you know, something else we talked about. And, we again, this is going to end up being the fourth time, I think, uh, fourth game <sighs> of Union Gaming we've had a chance to watch. They do like their Rain long team. games. Like, they tend to either win really, really quickly and snowball hard on the back of a strong performance out of Iowa or Ewo. Or they, uh, they do like to take it late. And I feel like that's really uh, w where they ended up getting that win. They just grinded it out uh, and, didn't, and never for a minute gave back the advantage that they gained over Sneaky Nick's right. Assassins. So that's something that they have to feel confident to do again if it comes down to it. They actually picked up a Viper now to go along with the Shadow Demon Ten and the Tram Protector. Remaining. I actually have not seen a game that Union Gaming played against um, a, like a similar remaining. skilled team mm -hmm. where they had a strong mid game. It seems they really struggle in that mid game. They have good early games, they have a These great late time. game, but their mid game is really lacking. So uh, hopefully this game they're going to show in the mid game like that little more presence. Instead yep. of just playing super defensive, letting the other team take it more than they should, I want them to contest a little more and push their advantage if they do have a good early game instead of waiting for that super ultra late game. But getting into the draft, we're going to see yet another Tree Protector. Oh, yeah. They seem to love this hero. It's had pretty good success. Yeah, it team. hasn't really like been like, oh, this is amazing. But mm -hmm. it was pretty good last game. Kept towers alive. They made a couple of trades they shouldn't have. So maybe they're learning as well how to play a tree and each game goes on. So if they can keep their towers alive, don't make trades anymore when you have a tree. It's like you just that's not something you should do. And on top of that, they're gonna pick up the Shadow Demon and the Viper. I'm not sure what the Viper pick is about. I personally, I'm a Viper hater. I never. <laughs> You're a hater. I'm a hater. Like I don't see Viper succeed very often. Like I, he does well in the lane. He crushes his lane, but he's got very slow move speed, easy Five to gank, and he does not recover. Yep. I, I, every time I see a Viper, the first thought that comes to mind is time. they have to have a specific plan for him. Like yeah. you, don't, you can't draft a Viper and be like, okay, we're going to go win lane and then we'll just crush. Like yeah. that, no, That's can't. not specific enough. It has to be specific to the point is we're going to put him here, we're going to do this, we're either going to shut down this hero or we're just going to farm freely because we, we can put too much pressure on with the strength of Viper early on. We're going to get an early mech on him and we're going to hit this timing window at X time with X item to go with the mech Viper 
and uh, and that kind of thing. He is a strong counterpick to some heroes, but when you look at what uh, Sneaky Nick's Assassin has right now, I actually like the punishing potential this trio has. If you make a mistake against them at any point in the mid game, a trio of Nature's Prophet, the Shadow Shaman, and the Bad Rider in particular, as soon as they get up. Uh, as soon as they hit six, really, they can just punish you for one, being out of position, obviously, yeah. and two, if you just lose a fight and Shadow Shaman doesn't deploy his wards or the Nature's Prophet is elsewhere pushing a lane, suddenly a small loss turns into a big loss very quickly. Right, and then going over the picks, as you're saying, Batrider, Nature's Prophet, and Shadow Shaman for Nikki, Sneaky Nyx Assassins. And for me, what's really strange is they have a Nature's Prophet and a Batrider. Those are prominently offlane heroes. Right. So that means one of them is going mid. I do not know which. I can assume maybe the Bat Rider go mid. I'd like to see the Bat go mid, personally. Mm -hmm. It's de it's not the greatest against Viper, but Bat Rider, in my opinion, takes a dump on Viper. Because as <laughs> like, soon as he gets that Ten blink, you just go to his lane, three. bring him back, pull him in a position where he doesn't want to be, mm -hmm. and there's no way of him Five getting out of it. Three. So Bat Rider's a really good hero to deal with the Viper. And they've got a Shadow Shaman picked up, so they have got a lot of pushing potential if they can get that pick off. Oh, exactly. And Puck, going to be picked up again for Union Gaming. We saw them run this last game. It was kind of an up and down performance. Good plays here and there. They did have the Bane to help lock him down, so he mm. had to deal with that uh, the entire time. But uh, it's really Snob that I'm curious about now. And when you look, I mean, it's so hard to call. Like, Viper and Puck, both heroes that do work well in mid, obviously. Viper can be solo safe lane farmed. He can also be, um, he can also be uh, tri laned if you really, really want to. Um, you know, I feel like there's a lot of ambiguity with Union right now because you could foreseeably decide to run an aggressive tri lane, and like you said, there is kind of this weird thing going on at the moment where you have two heroes that are predominantly off lane, so one's most likely going to mm. end up mid. And if you want to avoid that and maybe just try to pressure Ten mid, that's an option. Really but high. Keeper of the Light is actually going to be picked up by Dyer Snaw, so you want to talk about a fair amount of push very early? They got it. Yeah, that's actually really interesting to me. I'm not sure what the plan for the Keeper is here. Um, I'm sure they have a plan, but they haven't revealed it. Yep. With the last pick, they're probably going to make it all come together, because whenever I see Sneaky Nyx Assassin's draft, seconds, it's never like, remaining. this doesn't make sense at all. It's usually, right. Fluff is a good drafter. He usually has like an Five overall game plan remaining. of what he wants to achieve with mm -hmm. his heroes. But he has not revealed what he wants to do at all <laughs> with this lineup. He's the only thing time. that you can see is there's a lot of pushing potential. Right. But we do not know what they're going to glue Ten it all together with remaining. with their last pick. And Union Gaming, does this mean this Viper is going to be Iowa's hero? It may be. That's not a hero that we like to see him play, I but I think they're like going to do something puck. wonky with their lanes. It's kind of what, it, like yeah. just licking the way it is. I mean, it's so hard to call though because Shadow Demon Train Protector, great roamers early on, but what, are you just going to roam them the entire <laughs> early game? Like, remaining. I don't know that you have that option. Um, it's really hard against a Bat Rider. Five at least. Seconds, uh, Nature's Prophet is an easy kill for the most part, as long as not actually it's not going to be that easy because they don't have many lockdowns for the TP. So right. even if they disrupt, he can just instantly teleport out. Might be able to get away with a level of soul capture. Maybe he won't. But ganking potential isn't going to be the greatest here. I would like to see this Viper being played in some type of mid position and just offlane the puck. But it is dire, so it's very unlikely. So I think they're just looking for an offlane hero, and it's just going to be a safe lane farming Viper or an aggressive tri lane. That is the other option. And maybe that's what they smelled out as well on Sneaky <laughs> Nix Assassin, and Keeper is really good against aggressive tri lanes. Ten I love that stat, remaining. and just while we're waiting on uh, the last couple of picks out, Bad Rider back to a 100% pick seconds, man, and man. he's only made it through 10% of the time. Do you think the hero justifies that? I've actually been talking about it with a number of the, uh, number of the big Dota heads in the house, including you, including Sindarin. Mm -hmm. How do you Five feel about Bat getting all this remaining. attention? Does he justify it, or is it uh, maybe just a little bit of an overreaction to a hero yeah. who occasionally has a good game? And wow, Weaver going right back to the weave uh, that, that uh, we saw Iwo do okay but not great on last game. So it looks like it will be this like either dual lane position. They are dire, so it's a lot harder to dual lane on dire off lane. But as Nyx Assassin showed that it is possible if the lane's weak, but I don't think Sneaking Assassin is going to make a weak lane at all. Right. They already have Coddle and Shadow Shaman. The shackles into Illuminate is no joke. And, um, yeah, the Batrider, I do believe this Ten hero is very, remaining. very strong, and it is first pick, first ban worthy. It's one of those heroes that you just need to get Five level 2 on the offlane, then you can go to the jungle, then you automatically get, like, level 8 by, like, 7 <laughs> minutes with <laughs> right. a blink dagger. And no, not, there's not many heroes that can do that. Right. So the advantage you get in gold Five and farm is ridiculous, remaining. and once you get that blink yes. dagger, oh, all right, wow. I... I had a feeling that might happen, but I was hoping it wouldn't. Going back <laughs> <laughs> going back to the old school, man. Because we've had enough long games with these two teams, but let's have another. <laughs> going back to the old squad, I, what can you say? You have to love it. I mean, in terms of 
I mean, the synergy and the the running of Keeper of the Light and Phantom Lancer goes back a long, long time ago. You Very can split. Long, you yes. can split push with him super duper effectively, and then rely on relocate to bring him down if you're ready for a team fight or you have to get him into a fight. <laughs> Um, Chakra Magic makes him a very big annoyance in lane just because he can constantly spam uh, Spirit Lance. But what I like the most about this is how well he matches up, especially if you make it to the mid-game, the late stages of the mid-game and on into the late game, how well he matches up against Weaver and Viper. Predominantly single-target yes. heroes. There's not a whole lot of ability to quickly seconds. clear out these Phantom Lancer illusions. Yeah, Phantom Lancer is going to be a major, major, Five major problem remaining. for Union Gaming if they do not completely dominate him in the lane or... On top of that, they just they need to do something to win this game early. Because late game, if this peel gets up a Manta and Diffusal Blade, I think that's all he needs this yep. game. Like, he doesn't need to be that slick sl six slotted PA because the AoE is almost non existent on UG. Exactly. They've got Puck. That is it. Yep. None of their heroes really build Battle Fury, their ranged carries. So they do not have a choice but to find wherever this PL is laning and lane Viper against it mm -hmm. and hope you can cripple him to the point where he cannot get items. Well, but again, the problem is you have him with a Coddle, and Coddle just basically means that he's always going to be safe because he's always going to have a Doppelwalk available. He's always going to be able to spam you out with Spirit Lance if he wants to, if things start to feel a little hairy. And, uh, you know, even just to build upon him, I mean, you, you said Manta Diffusal. He's going to be able to start showing up to fights if he goes just simply Treads Drums Diffusal. Like, at that point, yeah. he can start showing up because what are they going to do? How do they clear it? Yeah, usually I do not like PL as a hero, but this is a great game to play PL mm -hmm. if you're going to play one. Yep. And... And you know, and that, that that's just all talking about the team fight potential. Think about how much split push they have. You can, like, you've got three heroes. Well, two really the most, the, the Phantom Lancer and the Prophet. But you've got global potential out of anyone just because of relocate. Nature's Prophet, of course, can be anywhere he wants at any point. Whenever he has a PL on team, he can yes. teleport in. And if you go, oh shouldn't have gone there, <laughs> brought back immediately. It just completely erases the mistake. And you can do goofy stuff, like even just send a Shadow Shaman out to split push by himself if he has wards available with. That and Ether Shock, he can push a lane by himself if he has to. Yeah, so they're can. you're right. Their lineup right now is very well put together. Mm -hmm. They can split push with the Furion and the Coddle, and even Batrider. All he has to do is yep. sit behind people split pushing, and if one person goes to challenge it, that's a death right there. Yep. Same thing with Shadow Shaman if he gets his blink. So they can utilize the whole map with SNA. Whereas heroes like Viper, they're not very mobile. Triant, no. not a mobile hero either. Shadow Demon isn't too mobile. Even if he was mobile, there's not much he can do. So I really would give the drafting advantage to SNA this game. Yeah, and you know, this is you know, something we talked about previously whenever you talk about these experienced teams and their willingness. And you know, we kind of, at the end of the broadcast of the, of the last game, it's like, well, who's going to be, who, is there going to be a team that's willing to pull out a gimmick? I don't see this as a gimmick at all. I don't think mm -hmm. this was necessarily pre-med whatsoever. I mean, I think a PL is like the safest pick you could possibly yeah, exactly. do. It's <laughs> smart. It's yeah. just smart. For, I mean, there's so many things he gives you that this Union Gaming team is not going to be able to match up very well against. The one hope they have mm -hmm. is, of course, uh, the disruption of a Phantom Lancer and to get an army of your own. Mm -hmm. And But even that is kind of a Hail Mary pass, just hoping for the best and hoping that Ewo and yeah. Sidoral will be uh, way over farm. Both teams moving out. They're not moving towards each other. So when we have a break, how about we take a look at who's handling who? Going to be fluffing stuff, playing on the Keeper of the Light. Sure does like his four-legged heroes, or at least heroes that ride four-legged <laughs> creatures. Whitebeard will be on the Shadow Shaman. It'll be IX Mike playing on the Bad Rider. Schnaw will be on the uh, Nature's Prophet. And Ush playing on the Phantom Lancer. Other side of the river, the Captain and the Carry and the guy that they're resting all of their hopes for TI4 on, that's going to be Ewo on the Weaver for the second game in a row. Got a win on it in two game battle. two. Sitter will be playing on the Viper Angel, who really had a deceptively impactful game on the Timbersaw uh, last game. He's going to be looking to have another impactful game on the Puck this time. Jericho um, is going to be joining Zindrals in the support positions. And just regardless of the result of this match, I just want to say these guys have played amazing all throughout this tournament. And, yeah, you know, surprised a lot of people, that's for sure. Yeah, Jericho and Zindrals. Zindrals in particular on his Sand King. An absolute monster. Didn't get him this time, but he's going to be looking to have just as much influence on the game on the Trina Protector. Horn blows, and we're underway. And looking at the... This is a very... They're going to let Peel free farm. I can't say I agree with this. So it's going to be a Peel free farming against a Weaver, and that's not a trade you want to take by any nice. means. Weaver is not a good hero against Phantom Lancer. It's, in fact, one of the worst carries because he does no AoE damage. Yep. His Sakuchi is okay with the first couple minutes, but come level 12... When he get or level eleven, when he gets his ult at level two and starts getting more magic immunity, yep. Sakushi starts doing nothing, and right clicks are not going to hurt like ten illusions very hard. So I can't agree with the laning phase here, but if they can get aggressive early, it'll warrant it. 
Well, just think, I mean, and this is just kind of an esoteric point to build on that. Um, you assume it'll probably be a fairly quick defusal coming out on the Phantom Lancer. Up until he hits level 3 time lapse, like, you end up taking away not only his mobility, but time lapse itself if you can just burn his mana down to nothing. So yeah, that is a possibility as well. So even aside from all the other reasons, he just is such, it's so hard countered by this. So, so what we're saying, guys, is PL's good against Weaver. How about we uh, we, we let that mm -hmm. dead horse rot on, the, right. rot on the sand for a little while. <laughs> We've been beating it for a while. And mid lane as well. Furion is actually a very good, very good hero against Viper mid. You can actually outlast hit him, which is rare, and he can never kill you because you have that teleport. Viper does not have a stun. And as you can see, Viper is taking a lot of damage from the Treant. And surprisingly, he does not go for a point in Krosis skin, which is a little strange. He's going to pick it up now, which makes it like you can't harass so much with the Treant without taking damage. So mid lane is going to have a bat. Bat's coming in too, not going to do much. He's just harassing because he can't get anything out of the lane on top lane and pretty quiet early game overall just gonna be farming on both sides but laning advantage i still think will be going towards snot it's gonna be around the 10 minute mark or so where ug needs to start making moves it's gonna be very imperative i really want to see how angel's gonna end up doing on this puck i feel like if they're gonna have any hope of really ganking out the phantom lancer Radiant's and putting a stop to all attack. of this uh, all this combat potential and push potential that we know snot has a lot of it's gonna revolve around him and his ability to make things happen along with his Jericho's going to disrupt the bad rider just to the east. Oh, he has so sticky napalm. Yeah, he does. And but here Pyrion. comes some help. Yep, here almost seeing coming in. And it looks like Mike is going to let him go. Took a little bit of damage there, but it uh, looks like everyone's going to make it back to lane attack. in one piece. And we have a Coddle mid. If he sneaks in the trees up there and shoots a blast, they could potentially get a kill off on this Viper. But he's just going to chill for now. Reaching that XP. <sighs> Love and stuff. Put on his robe and wizard hat this game. Maybe he's trying to get level three. I think he's going to duck into the trees there and probably go for a blast. Yep, it looks like Snow willing to run forward and try to get a little bit of damage done. It's being pinged out right now. Yeah, so. he, that's his teammate saying, get in there, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lock and load, man. It's time. Courier is actually coming in right behind him. And we'll be heading back, so. It uh, doesn't look like they were at all interested in trying to do anything there. Very quiet laning phase so far. Citadel being very aggressive. There's the Illuminate that will connect and the follow-up Sprout. He will use a Tango to eat through a Trance. Come out right afterwards but not able to body block him. And a Chakra Magic uh, just to get him that mana pool back up. So cute little tactic but all in all only a little bit of lost HP. Yeah, that's, overall that's wasted the time for Fluff. He could have spent that time stacking and farming the jungle. Wanted to get a kill but hmm, not going to get too much out of it. Hush continues to free farm down the bottom and he's... Love and life at the moment. He's at 23 CS. Uh, 19 for the Weaver, 17 for the Viper. So it's not as if they're doing terrible. Viper's actually winning mid lane pretty damn hard. Uh, 8 to 17 at the moment. So Snaw getting his levels, but not a whole lot else in the face of this Viper. That's usually to be expected. Viper isn't here. That's very hard to lane against. What they're just really going to need to do is, like I said, Batrider, very good hero against Viper. Not so much in the lane, but once he gets his Blink Dagger up, if he can get it in a reasonable time, mm -hmm. he can just grab it. Easy kill on Viper mid. It's very hard to run from a Batrider, so Viper. Your move speed's already so slow. Turn rate's pretty slow. And with Sticky Napalm, it's even worse. So he's going to win that, and Furion can always just go back into the jungle. It's like, mid's hard. I can get experience down here. No problem. Yep. And speaking of the jungle and speaking of the bat, he did find his level two finally. And that's a big old stack over there at the hard camp. And just beginning to pile on the napalm and gonna begin to clear it. So the blink dagger, unless they do something to try to uh, to try to slow it down. That blink dagger and boots and the such should be short and coming. But yeah, this has been as quiet a game as we've had in a while. Like really not a whole lot of pressure anywhere. Yeah, like it's a ten minute mark, like they have the most aggressive lineup you could ask for in UG and they're playing it passively. So if they just want to get their levels and go, they're going to have to go. But other than that, we're just going to sit here and watch people farm for a little bit. Once the blink gets up, there will definitely be action. Before then, it'll probably be very quiet. And we can actually see how defensive at the moment Snaw is playing. Is They've got attack. pretty much everyone in the vicinity of their jungle. And it makes sense to me. Like, we talked, in, in, we talked for a long time about... Uh, looks like White Beard. We'll Radiant's get the shackles off on Angel. Little extra damage with an ether shock. He actually didn't phase shift out of it either. So unable to do much else. But we've been talking the entire draft and on through to now just how well Snaw has an advantage in the late game. So of course they're willing to have a, a passive early game. Fluff's going to rotate the top. Should be enough to at least keep this tower standing a little bit more. Wow, uh, Midas already done on PL. Look at that. And Weaver. They both have Midas. That's ridiculous. Yeah, they both have very quick Midas timings. So 
They kind of want to fight this in the late game. I thought Dyer's Weaver might just go for like a cool of treads and then TP down the bottom lane instantly and just start laning against him. But it looks like they're just going to go for the late game battle. We'll see how that works out. But most teams are being both the oh on bottom. Now they're not going to get anything. Yep. Train hits hard, but not hard enough. Attack. Both teams are being fairly efficient. Like they notice Batrider. One th one thing you should do against a Batrider when you see him go to the jungle, you should pressure his lane, force him to come back here, or force another hero from bottom lane to come up there. That way, Puck feels less threatened in that lane, or you get a free tower. So good idea by them to force this out here. Well, this is just a strength of the Keeper of the Light, though, because Keeper is kind of. You know, on the short end yeah, of the yeah. stick in terms of experience and stuff. Now it's like, oh, okay, bats in the jungle. I'll just go sit here under my tower, and you can't push into me ever. Otherwise, you're feeding me gold, and I'll have a scepter quickly. Like, and that's exactly what he's doing. Look at this. And yeah, Fluff Boom. foresaw like they're they're going to want to push this. Coddle is a good hero to rotate up there when Bat goes to the jungle, yep. so we can prevent this. So once again, great drafting. Yep. Zero to zero. Six and a half minutes into the game. And uh, CS is about where you'd expect it. The Prophet is suffering mightily, though. He's at just 16 for the moment. Viper's doing well in mid. Of course, he's barely being contested at this point. Has 40 and 13 the nice. 44 for the Weave and 50 for the Phantom Lancer down at bottom. Really want to see how Phantom Lancer ends up building this out. Um, see what he's got. Yeah, he's obviously got Midas here. What's the, uh, what's the optimal build, do you think? You've been left completely to your own devices. What's the quickest, greediest way you can snowball this game? I mean, I don't think he should be too greedy because he already has the Midas. I think he should just go straight into um, either a drums, the treads, pick up the diffusal blade or manta. And in any order, it doesn't really matter so much. Obviously, drums first if you do want to go to it. But he looks like he's going Vlad's first. This is also popular. Um, I don't like it a lot, but it is good. It allows you to just, just duck in the jungle and you can just farm there forever, pretty much. So it's not a bad uh, tool to have. So it looks like he's going to go for an early game Vlad's and then probably into the Manta and the Fusil Blade. That's normally the norm. Well, Coddle, a little out of position this time. He might actually be Radiant's caught out. And there's going to be a Leech Sheet very quickly. Here comes Sidereal. And yep, this will be your first blood. Fluff and stuff. I honestly wasn't sure what he was doing. He was doing just fine sitting under his tower and uh, just spamming them out. He went elsewhere. He must, uh, I was going to say pre rune but it's eight minutes now, so he was in the wrong place to pre rune too. Either way, he abandoned the tower when he rotated back over. Just a very nice collapse out of Union Gaming, and they're on the board first. Finally a kill in eight minutes. Yeah, Viper's having a great start. If he can keep this up without dying, he's going to have an early mech. And along with the Treant Protector, they can start putting pressure on the map. And that's exactly what they have to be doing. He's going to have a... He has the mech recipe already. He almost has a mech, actually. He's getting very close to that first blood and the free farm in mid lane. So he'll probably just spam Buckler and just push mid and hard. And they already got that tier 1 top and the first blood on him. So Union Gaming off to a good start. Let's take a look at Angel. Let's see how he's doing. CS-wise, he's, I mean, poor as a, broke as a joke. Mm -hmm. Is making progress towards a blink, though. He's got brown boots and 1,600 gold tucked away. So been saving, skip, <laughs> scripping together his pennies and nickels. And is uh, in a decent position there. When the mech comes out on the Viper, I, it seems to me like that's when they have to go. If they have a mech on a Viper and a Puck that in a terrible position still gets a, a moderately timed Blink Dagger, I don't think they can afford to take take a breather and then just continue to farm. It seems like no, with this lineup, can't. they've just got to go for the win very quickly. They need to focus on killing. They have one focus and one focus only. Pia. Yep. Like, every time they get a Blink... If they get this, Blink will be the actually a really good way of dealing with PL. He just need to carry Dust, Blink, and they just need to keep killing this PL over and over again. And a lot of this game will be determined on if this peel dies or if he does not die. Right. There's the mech done. Coming out at just about nine minutes. Great start in mid lane for him. He's number three in the overall net worth. Weaver's at top. Phantom Lancer just slightly behind. But at the same time, the Bat Rider has a blink of his own. And this is something we haven't even talked about. We gave it a footnote basically during our initial discussions. But the Bat Rider's ability to just kind of confound everything that they need to have happen. I mean, Weaver has to farm to really feel effective. So you have to think they're going to be trying to do the majority of the work and taking down the PL with just four. Now you have a Bat Rider who can lasso out a Viper and perhaps bring him down quickly. How do you make up for that? I mean, you've got a nice tool in the disruption to try and help out. But, you know, you can't assume that's always going to be there to save your heroes. Yeah, it's, it's, he has a mech now, so it's actually going to be a lot harder. Speaking of disruption, at the top, Fluff and stuff, in some trouble. And gets off the Illuminate, not going to matter a ton, though, as he's brought down. But they make it Jericho as well. No, the Living Armor is there, and here's Mike showing off that Blink Dagger for the first time. Jericho making a run for it. One stack of Sticky Nate Palm, enough to slow him to get one more auto attack. So it ends up being Union Gaming, who feeds two for one that time. We're all knotted up, two to two. And, of course, taking trades at this point is in the favor. On bottom lane, Viper is smoke ganking down here. Viper taking the man fight, but little does he know there's a mech fight. Yeah. 
White beard. Yes. Trying to go man mode. Rasta, great hero. Not exactly the best one-on-one -on -one fighter whenever you have burst damage. The one problem I did notice this game is Nature's Prophet had a rough time mid, so he has to go to the jungle. But Batrider needs the jungle. Peel <laughs> needs the jungle. So there's not enough jungle for all of them, which means they have to take this tier one top so they can get into the enemy jungle, which right. isn't going to be so easy considering Puck has a blink dagger now mm -hmm. and they have a mech on the Viper. So if they get crunched in their base like this, there's not going to be enough farm for everyone. Yeah. Well, they've got such sufficient push, though. And right now, we can see that uh, Shadow Shaman's being left to his own at bottom. And I think that's kind Actually, of... Actually, he went Midas on Puck. They're oh, wow. really going, and they want to play this late that's game. That's nuts to me. <laughs> that is nuts to me. We've got a Dust on top of Viper. There's no TP scroll on him, so they... This, yep. this is good. They're going to get a kill on the much-needed PL. If they can if they can get Osh, it certainly looks like they will. That is desperately needed for two reasons. One, Viper can snowball. And he's certainly in a position to do so. 3-0 at 11 Nature's minutes Prophet's in. Prophet's going to pick off the wow. chain protector here. Yep, getting him up at top. But uh, the Shadow Shaman, I think, was being left alone a lot down there. Just Bottom so lane, there's going to be a dive. He's got his wards. He will go ahead and use them. No reaction, though. He, these heroes are just melting, and Union's doing everything we knew they had to do, man. And they're not just doing yeah. it, they're doing it well. Yeah, by the 10-minute mark, like I said, they have to get together and start getting kills. And they're doing exactly that. I've actually never seen Rome around so much, but it's been very effective. In this game, that's really his only option. Yes. And, um, yeah, I, it's, I'm actually surprised Rasta threw his wards down there. I, what I was He's saying, going for a ward trap, but that's a, a big loss for yeah. them. Very big loss. Well, like you said, they need to start bringing these towers down, especially with the tree on the other side, because look, look at the mid tower. What little damage was done is being erased. And it's you can, you have to commit. You need to show up with Lasso ready, uh, with a big wave, with treants. Uh, with Keeper of the Light, with spamming the wave, the wave out, everything else, and then drop the wards Dyer's and try to get a tower, tower down. And now that's just more attack. time that Union Gaming is going to have to try and get picks. Up the top, top looks like they're going to get one on. Oh, very nice with the Sprout. Is it enough? Flame Break? No. Last hit. Oh, one last auto attack. As Snaw. Right place, right time. Sprout in a minute. It was a good Dyer's reaction out of Iwo, but not attack. quick enough. And now that Dyer's top tier one going to be glyphed. Let's see if they want to actually react. Going to be tough for them, though, as bottom's being pushed as well. Or Indeed. was being pushed. Looks like they're backing off for the moment. Yeah, I was really worried at first. Uh, well, Tree and Protector. Looks, yep. He does have invis. Are there any sentries? Dust? Yeah. He has some. Yeah, well, that doesn't help. <laughs> it's not too much. Yep. And there's one sentry Dyer's drop by Fluff, but that's all they have. Yep. There's no TP scroll, so he's just going to chill out for a little bit. Sidoral going to be sprouted up on the high ground. White Boots here with the shackles. And they're trying to right click him down, but he is fairly tanky at this level. Has the mech, will deploy it behind it. There's an overgrowth. Blinding light from Fluff and stuff prevents him from doing damage for a bit. But they're trying to fight this out. Fluff will finally be killed off from the back. Hush has to back off. Look how low they all are. There's a coil. Whitebeard does drop the Great wards and gets trap. the trap off. And now they are going to be forced to retreat. Mike not done though. There's a sprout. Sidoral does eat his way through, but it's not going to matter. He's being burned down too quickly. Orb not going to be enough of a deterrent. And Mike going to stick with this. He doesn't have now finally has enough mana Firefly for another stick. Firefly is he should be fine. Yep. I, he uh, actually was super low on mana. If he had been able to throw another stack or two, would have gotten that kill. But instead, not the case. So a lot of bloody noses on each side. Six to six. That kill count piling up now. Indeed it is. And at this point, like, every kill Snog gets is incredibly important. Because the nature of their lineup is they just need to hold on for as long as they possibly can. And I was worried at the beginning of this game that this game would go really oh, passive like most more. games do with Union Gaming. And then Peel would be a huge problem. But they're sticking it to them right now. And they're getting a lot of farm up. They have the Midas on the puck, which I, I can't agree with it completely. But if he can get his Blink Dagger up quick with the Midas then it could be working out in the long run for them if they get a really farmed puck in the late game, get a quick hex up, and just gank the crap out of this PL before he gets his illusions, like to a point where they cannot defend against him. Speaking of illusions, that'll be the item choice for the PL. He's picked up his Yasha, or at least on his way to it. I think it's being flown out to him as we speak. And he'll be, uh, yep, there it is. So he'll be looking to get a Manta style following the Vlads, and we'll see if the Diffuse is going to be a part of the game plan after that or what build he wants to go. But at 15 minutes in, I feel like Union Gaming has really done some work. The question is, what would I'll put it this way. What would you consider a quick blink timing on Angel? I mean, he would have had it, but he's going... He's not going to have it for 20 minutes, <laughs> yeah, until 20 I, minutes. At least he, 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm curious. And it's not, there is no such thing as a quick blink timing anymore for yeah. him. He's got a Midas gaming, which is... <laughs> I am afraid this item choice may have been a mistake, but we'll find out around the 25 minute mark for his item progressions at, and if he needed a blink to actually get kills in this game. 
Pressure on Tier 1 bottom. And it looks like it's not going to be contested. No one's on the way down. They might try to trade it top Radiant as the Furion is pushing there. And he's actually got uh, Rasta pushing with his wards along with Ush and Fluff and stuff in mid. So this could end up being big for them. If they can trade two for one, they'll be quite happy against a tree and protector. Yeah, they're going to get both. Very well played that time. Good reaction. Reaction's coming to top. And... Uh, yep, does manage to make it away and gets the tower with the help of the little trains banging away. So very, very good trade that time for Snaw. They need to stop trading towers with the tree protector. This is, I've seen this too many times now. They traded two towers for one. And that's the position they don't want to get in. They, that's two towers they got. That opens up the map. But more importantly than anything, that opens up top map for the farm for either Batrider Furion or the PL. Yep. They're all stuck in their jungles, you can see. Now that opens up the map a lot. That top tower was huge. Yep. And it's actually ridiculous how many heroes can go there and try to farm in that top part because they are they do lack stuns so much. Like, yes. what are you going to do unless you're going to blow? Yes, an overgrowth worth blowing, but other than that, uh, you can rotate up the Furion, the, the Bad Rider, which is innately mobile. Furion has no problem going. And it just, uh, yeah, very big difference. And more importantly, look at Ush. Ush mm -hmm. continuing to pile up the items. He's got 2,000 gold just about, about 1,900 actually, mm -hmm. on top of his uh, Yasha and his Midas. So he's very, very close to having his Manta style done, and honestly, they may be able to start bringing him to fights once Manta is complete. Yeah, they probably won't. They don't want to fight because the nature of Yuji's lineup is like, just don't fight, dodge as much as you can, but once he gets the Manta up, you can disjoint Dust, which is very important. It's going to make him a lot harder to kill. You're going to need two sets of Dust or a Sentry and a Lockdown, attack. and unfortunately, you can't really lock him down Dyer's too well when your Puck does not have a Blink attack. Dagger, so it's going to be very difficult to kill him once he finishes that Manta style. Lincoln's done on Weaver in the meantime, so not as if Union Gaming is slacking in their item progression as well. And uh, we were both kind of questioning um, the way that Iwo decided to build Weaver last game, taking a look at his inventory, about where he was before. What do you think is the correct way to approach this time? Uh, I think this is a Radiance game. Oh, I know he's on. last one on the puck. Yep, Angel drug back and into the ward trap. Don't know if that was necessary, but there's going to be a coil. They'll have to engage into a very nice sprout. And if they get any help at all, yeah, we're actually going to see Snod just get the hell out. I expect him to end up dead. And Iwo coming down to help finish things up with the help of the rest of his team. Sidoral was there as well. And they end up going two for one. So even though they get the puck, they have to give up the Shatter Shaman and the Bad Rider to do it. Another great set of reactions coming out of Union. Flip push commences in mid lane, though. So they're going to have to repel that. Use a couple of living armors to get it back up. They got the glyph out of it. And does Coddle have a TP? He does, so there's no way he should die here. Yeah, Link is actually going to be popped, and yeah, he's going to head on out. So makes it away safely, but yeah, this is going to become, in a lot of ways, I think, a race. Can you split push more quickly? Oh, look than at the tree, tree right now. This is good. This is very good what he's doing. He's running into the jungle and warding every single camp. <laughs> So if he can ward these camps out, they're probably going to get a gem on Caudal as soon as they can. But if he can ward all these camps, the, all they have to do is focus on their jungle. Right. And that's where heroes will be to farm. So very good warding. And, but uh, I'm going to go back to the point where I was saying, like, this is a Radiance game, I feel, on Weaver. Because yeah. they need the AoE damage for PL. Like, once he gets the Radiance up, that'll buy them time for PL. To, they need to get one more item other than, like, the Diffusal Blade and the Manta. Right. They're going to have to get, like, a Heart then and just go into the really late game. So if he does go a Radiance, I think that'll be really good. I doubt he'll do it, but maybe he will. Hopefully he will. I think that's the best possible item he can go for. I love this. Just looking at the wards and how <laughs> disappointed they're going to be about 40 seconds from now yes. when they realize they have nowhere to eat. <laughs> Shadow Shaman did get that Blink Dagger, though, and I love a, a very good... It's not really quick. I mean, it's 20 minutes, but not terribly timed either. Uh, hang on, Whitebeard. As I'm bragging on you, son, you're getting killed in the jungle. Very good rotations, and wow, Matron's Wrath doing a lot of damage. You'll be able to mech through that. No one there to punish him for it at all. And this is just like you said, man, beautiful warding. You ward the jungle. And uh, they had that ward just to the south there. Yep, there you go. Mm. Um, so they knew they were all rotating through. They just mm -hmm. found their way in and uh, got a free one that time. If anything good about it, though, uh, they had just bought the Blink Dagger. Oh, they on. just missed the dust on top lane, too. He was just going to get out just fine. Yep. But uh, they had just bought the Blink Dagger on the Shatter Shaman. So yeah. I love the le the lethality that a, a, a Blink Dagger gives the Shatter Shaman, really, at this stage of the game. And they're not actually going to have a gem anytime soon unless Ike's Mike picks it up, which it is quite possible. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think he will do it. But once they find out all these camps are warded, they're like, yo, someone buy a gem. And Mike's like, oh, uh, come on, guys. Because <laughs> <laughs> <I laughs> like, they just bought an Ogre Club on the Coddle, which would have been the, the preferred target to get it. But it's yeah. not bad on Mike. He has his four staff. He has his core. I'm sure he would have wanted a BKB or something like that. But it'll have to wait. 
taking a look at Snob, by the way. He's gone Shadow, excuse me, Shadow Blade, and he's going right on up to an Orchid. Orchid against a Puck and a Weaver makes a ton of sense, right? Yeah, it, it's really good, especially against Puck, because he doesn't really buy things like BKB or Link and Spigger, so it's usually just the sure silence on him. Right. They're going to try to push in mid. Glyph Radiance pops to try to keep that tower up and standing. It's about quarter health. And this is where Keeper comes in handy. Spamming those waves out. Ewo eating a lot of damage. He may try to go for a lasso here. They're coming in on top. Ush split pushing as well. Angel's going to phase shift away from the Spirit Lance. But looks like, uh, yeah, looks like Mike went fishing, but didn't find a target. He did not. He may be going for this Radiance. He's up to 2.5k. Hasn't bought anything. He's going no boots, which is also a kind of an indicator that he's going for a big hitter item like a Radiance. So if he does go for that build, I have a little more faith, and it will buy him a lot of time. Oh, he's, oh it doesn't figure it <laughs> off. Coddle's just doing his thing and pulling people around, and Coddle's getting fairly close to Ags. He's about a little over halfway there. So once he gets that up, it's going to be really annoying with PL. Super annoying with the split push and the Nature's Prophet. But so they do need to get these towers. Looks like they need to get the mid tower. Still have a deward at that jungle, by the way. One expired. They bought the gym, though, on Mike, so it's going to happen anytime. At bottom, they're going to start pushing this tier one. Here comes the TPN. And looks like both want to retreat. And ooh, the, the coil actually missed everyone. Yeah. So a little bit of a misplay there. And now, up at top, they might decide to go ahead and continue with the push with Furion. Rat Dota. Yep. TP and one in. The sentry goes down and he gets caught. And the overgrowth there. It's just Jericho there for now, though. I don't know that they have enough damage, but the slow from Demonic Purge might buy him enough time. Another sentry goes down and the dust. So I don't actually know that was worth it. They spent an awful lot <laughs> to bring him down. Two sentries and a dust to kill a uh, Shadow Blade Furion. Either way, they get the kill. Yeah, and, and as you've seen, every lane's going to be pushed now. What they, they need to find a way to devise a plan to get a kill without spending three heroes on it. They need to get dust on this puck. I noticed last game Angel was buying, like, was it Angel buying no detection? No, it was uh, Sidereal yeah, buying no Citeril's. detection. But they definitely need to buy more detection than they did last game. They've had yeah. a Shadow Blade on top of the Nature's Prophet, and we've got an PL. So you need dust and sentries, because if he does happen to use the Manta, you're going to need another way to lock him down. Yep. And uh, we actually saw our awesome camera guy highlighting. Definitely was worth it. It was a 560 gold streak mm -hmm. that was shut down there. So mm -hmm. cause of two sentries and a blast of dust. But well worth it. Yeah, justifiable. 10 to 7. That Union sure. Gaming at 23 minutes. Continuing to just roll. We can take a look at the gold graph. And, yep, it's still slightly an advantage of Sneaky Nick's Assassins. But Union has been fighting and fighting hard to get that as close to zero as possible. Indeed they are. So basically this whole game is just going to be... Nyx split pushing, playing Rad Dota, and UG playing on the defense. Uh -huh. Trying to get as many kills as they can, so it's up to Snog to not get caught by these ganks, and it's up to UG to find clever ways to get the ganks. And that's basically going to be the story of this game. There's a Rasta, and we talked about this. You know, you can put one or two heroes, sometimes just one, but just the wards by themselves are enough to uh, to push hard here. And yeah, they're going to have to use their Glyph, and now they might decide to go for it as they're going to reveal there's more than one there. At bottom, we've got two pushing from Union Gaming. Trying to counter push a bit. Those wards are still banging away on the tower. They're going to have to end up denying this, I think. No, they got tree. They sh they don't deny it, dude. You're a tree. Uh, <laughs> you, whatever. <laughs> Look at that. I think they're just worried about something coming at a Furion showing yeah, up. Yeah, maybe. It's a safe play, but you don't want to lose towers like that, unfortunately. It does go down, and we've got... What did he just buy? Was that a Radiance recipe on the courier? Not sure. He was up towards It is, yeah. Gold. All right, so yeah. he is going Radiance, so... Good call, good, man. Good item choice from him. That was the best possible item he could have got this game. About 3,300 gold-ish. Uh, actually, make that about 4K gold. <laughs> Separating the two teams in overall net worth. We can see it's a very, very close game. And yeah, That'll help the Weaver push lanes out so he can be other places to get games. Right. And he's also going to... Uh, yeah. I was actually going to say something dumb. <laughs> I caught myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, okay, we're coming up on 25 minutes now. Do you think Union has done enough work? The, the defusal just comes well, out of pain on my PL is way more farm than right. he should be. He has yep. bots, Midas, Vlads. That's kind of what I was Manta. thinking. Like, defusal, like, yes. With the defusal up now, uh, I mean, it just comes down to when Nyx really feels confident. They don't have to feel in a rush to fight now, I don't think. But I feel like they could. I feel like they could just start bringing him to fights and decide to push his five. And it could be, especially if they do what they're doing now. Bring him into the jungle, let him get a little bit of an ar uh, army going, then rotate everyone else up slowly, mm -hmm. and then just rush him with 10 illusions and rush a tower and make them yeah. defend. Um, I don't think they'll ever head on fight. Mm -hmm. I think during this whole game, their whole plan is to be separated. Just right. get chip damage, 
they do have a Treant, but they have a Nature's Prophet as well, so they can chip hard enough where Treant can't actually heal as much damage as PL and the Nature's Prophet. You did mention the Orchid. It is good for locking heroes down, but I think in this type of playstyle, a book may have been better, just for the sheer split-pushing potential that they have. But if they can get kills off it, it'll be justified. We can see Fluff basically being Usha's private chauffeur, mounting him from top lane to bottom and back again and certainly taking their time. So if Union is got to be feeling the pressure, I mean, by now they've certainly seen Usha's inventory. They know where he is in his progression. They also know that their own Weaver has a Radiance. What's the game plan, you think, looking Guy ahead? Is this a, okay, we've got our Radiance, we don't want to go ultra late, but we can push our window a little bit longer, or is it just about time to start getting frantic and trying to get momentum uh, to, that, uh, to that big snowball kind of a moment? Unfortunately for them right now, there's not much they can do but play on the defensive because with the Nature's Prophets pushing and the um, the PL pushing as well, he can't be everywhere at once. They're going to have a major problem with getting these lanes pushed out. So they're going to have to do a smoke gank with like the Shadow Demon, the Puck, maybe the Viper, just any of them but the Weaver. Just go smoke gank out and try to find a kill on anything they can, preferably the Nature's Prophet and the PL. I think PL is a, almost impossible to kill at this point with the illusions and how safe he played, but if he can kill off the, um, the Nature's Prophet, then they can start getting some map control. They're going to do Roche for now, but I don't think they can actually use this Aegis or anything but play defensive, unfortunately. It looks like Snaw knows what's up. Trying to be cutesy about it, but he has to bail on out after showing his face. Aegis picked up by Iwo, Iwo. Boots of Travel is also another great item. Yeah, Gigi that's an excellent pick up. Point. And yeah, we can see he actually has not picked up a set of boots. They're still getting kills like this, and they've, they're all on like a major kill streak. It's like five or six or something like that. Yep. But they still have no map control whatsoever. So it's great they're getting kills, but it's not one of those games like, oh, they're getting kills, they're winning. I still think they're pretty far behind right now. And we can see it's going to be a dual scepter build on the side of Sna. They've got point boosters up on both Fluff and Whitebeard. So that could be fun. And, oh, man, it just, it just occurred to me. Does um does a... Uh, a scepter on Coddle, does his illuminate heal illusions? Uh, I have no idea, but they should. I don't see why not. If, I think it heals everything. If, that, if that's you. the case, that's brutal. Yeah. Like, that's really brutal. Have an army of illusions. That and just, yeah, put an illuminate behind it and yeah. it can push. Dude, that's so brutal. Up in mid, down the bottom, oh. actually. Yep, there's a disruption. And be a nice catch, and it will be a nice catch. And that's what you were talking about. They just have to get their picks. And I feel like that's about as good a one as they could have got. That's 60 seconds of not having yes. to worry about Fury That's the push. hero they needed to kill. Right. That's the easiest hero for them to kill, and it's the most important. Well, Peel is the most important, but it's not a realistic kill. Right. Because he's never going to put himself in danger to really die. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, split push coming on top lane still, but at least they get two lanes out now that Nature's Prophet is gone. Yep. And Fluff trying to hold the tower. Prophet's still down another 35 seconds. He sits at number three in overall net worth. The Phantom Lancer is about half of a big item ahead of the Weaver at this point. It's going to be another book build coming out uh, for Union Gaming's Puck. And don't mind that at all for the same reasons we, we liked it last time. I mean, you need the detection, you need the vision. Yeah, it's not so bad. Um, another good item he could have went for is a Shivas. Mm -hmm. It's like with all his AoE damage, once again, it'll buy him more time where he can actually solo kill illusions right. with all that AoE damage. So... Time is what they need, and if they can keep getting pick-offs, getting the item builds, and at some point build these items that can help clear illusions, that'll be really good for them. As you can see, the Radiance, also very good. It's slowly chipping them down. It's dying. So, Radiance, good item. Shiva's is another great item for that, and that's about all they can really get. Like, Battle Fury is a good item, but they don't have any melee heroes for it, so as far as AoE goes, that's pretty much all they can ask for for now, and that'll buy them enough time to keep getting the pick-offs and maybe get some map control. Heart of Tarask is now on the way for Ush, and that's when things really get tough. And let's see, yeah, it looks like Stomp will make it away at top lane. But yeah, man, you end up getting, you know, just a Diffusal Heart is huge. But Manta Diffusal Heart, and that could feasibly be done in the next few minutes. I mean, This is going to be a six-slotted peel in no time. <laughs> yeah. All he has to do is basically sell his Midas and his Vlads for two other Gosh. big items. Yep. And then he's going to be there. <laughs> I don't think he needs it to, man. Like, against the team composition and all the issues, like, the item progression is just a little too slow, I think, on UG. And, you know, once he gets that heart, like, I just don't know how they're going to have any chance of killing him, especially if you end up having the, the coddle with his ags up by then. He's got to be getting close as well. 
Yeah, he is very close to the Ags. He's just like 800 attack. gold off. And yeah. the good news is they're going to get this tower bottom. So lanes are pushed out enough where they can get a tower. And that's basically the name of the game for them. Getting the lanes pushed out enough so they can actually take objectives. Right. Which is going to be... Gonna get a rax on top. Yep. That's just how simple as that. So this, if they go here, this is an all-in move. Ah, uh, PL's got that tower down to a quarter health. They gotta make up their mind quick. They're gonna use the glyph. And wow, they're actually gonna drop the wards, and they're gonna come in, and they just broke this game wide open. Iwo turns back around, and we actually saw a disruption onto the bad rider, but just keeping everyone from coming back home is gigantic. Prophet is hooked up. Viper's there, but he's all by himself. He's not gonna be able to do anything to stop this. And what a disaster in a moment of indecisiveness and a very quick capitalization coming from Sneaky Nick's Assassins using the Flame Break, using the Shadow Shaman with that Blink Dagger to stop all of those TPs. And that has to feel like you just got the wind knocked out of you if you're Union Gaming. Yeah, like I said there, that was an all-in move. They had to go there or had to get back before they got up that hill, or else Batrider and all those other heroes are going to cancel TPs and you're going to lose their racks. And that's something they can't deal with right now. Like, the split push is already hard enough, and down a lane of racks, it's going to be even harder to deal with. Yep. And they are not equipped to deal with that type of pressure. Yeah, it, it's it's that hesitation, man. They ran in, they ran out, and and you, you feel for them. It's it, it, you, it just with one of those moments where you, the excitement of it has to be getting to you. It's like, we can go for this, but no, we can't, no, we can't, no, we can't. <laughs> Two or three people going, dude, we have to go. And then, no, go, go, go. Right. A moment of confusion. And yeah, Nyx Assassin is able to capitalize. The gold graph really doesn't even reflect that. The loss of a, of a uh, melee Rax against this lineup is yeah. so much bigger than a 5k gold. It's it just is, tremendous. Yeah. That's going to open up the map. These two towers on bottom lane are going to go down in no time because mm -hmm. they're going to have to keep dealing with that top lane. And at this point, they just need to actually go all in now. Yep. Like, they made... They want, they thought about it, then they go, let's go all in, okay, let's not go all in, and then they just took a huge loss. And it looks like they're going to be able to grab the Weaver here. Yep. Ewell, brought down, has his Aegis, Pop Sidril's going to end up dying behind the fight. Illuminate was right there as well, and now he's back up, and he gets Orchided a little late, but it's not going to matter. Spirit Lance is going to connect just in time to slow him, he gets Hexed, and... This is like, they fought so hard. It's yeah. it's like, a, you ever watch a boxing match where it's a back and forth and then one boxer just barely clips another's chin and then they just hit the, ma the mat? That's how this feels. Angel going to be disrupted defensively as we see Snog come around. He uses the Orchid and uses the Sprout on Jericho as well. And trying to get themselves home. Yeah, wow, they both made it. Well, Whitebeard just took one tower down there. Now he's just going in for the tier three. He lost two towers there. Yep. And they all have to heal now. And... This game is coming to a close. They can't deal yep. with this anymore. They're going to lose another tier 3, possibly a Rax. Oh, poor Union Gaming. Like, it's one thing that I, I think what it just distresses me, and you, you have to feel for them so much. They've come so far and fought so hard, and no one was talking about them having a chance to actually make it as far as they did. And they had a chance to <clears throat> advance and potentially face off against Team Liquid, who... Um, there's a lot of question marks around. I mean, if you beat Sneaky Nick's Assassins, you're able to beat anyone in this field. Yeah. And they pushed in the three games. And there is still a little bit of Dota to be played, but Tier 3 bottom, Naked Racks bottom, uh, lack of melee Racks top, and this lineup beginning to snowball as hard as it is. And when you just look at the Phantom Lancer, he is gigantic. Just utterly, totally gigantic. Has his bots up, level 2 Diffusal, Heart, Manta, Vlad's. And 1,700 gold to build and whatever he wants. Too, so yeah, exactly. Basically, all they're going to be, ha all Nyx has to do right now is just play a little bit of cat and mouse, and keep it up for a little bit, and they're just going to start losing buildings. And it's it comes down to the draft at the end of the day. Like that's one of the beautiful things about Dota. Yep. They're going to be going on mid. Looks like they might get a kill here, but as you can tell from Nyx assassins, like you can look at the scoreboard. They're dominating in kills, but that's the beautiful thing about Dota. Yep. No matter how many kills you have, that doesn't mean you're winning the game. It's strategy, man. Yeah, there's so many different aspects of this game, yep. whether deciding whether you're winning or losing. Kills is not always the primary one. Yep. I love it. It's like all those threads you always see on Reddit. It's what's the biggest mis misconception you see of players who are new to Dota? It's that kills matter as much as they think they do. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, just as a professional caster, I would say probably a full quarter, if not more, of the matches I cast, at least one in four, the team that wins doesn't have those kills. At least that yeah. many, if not more. Uh, they're trying to get some work done here at this mid-tier two. 
But... Pure Illusion going in bottom. So, we're gonna spin the root. <laughs> one of those games. Yep. And they're gonna get the disruption off. This is what we're talking about. Trying to get an army of your own. Can you get some RNG luck? There you go. Getting a little bit ahead. War. We're going to war. <laughs> but, uh... So they managed to hold the racks a little bit longer, but they're kind of hoping for a miracle, man. If you're the captain of Union Gaming and you just had the wind knocked out of you that badly, what are you telling your teammates to try and get them back together and trying to give yourself the maximum possible chance to turn this game around? I mean, if I'm the captain of Union Gaming right now, I would be stumped because, well, I think he is stumped because you're thinking desperately, what can we do? And you're just frustrated. Yeah. Like, this is very frustrating to play against. There's nothing you can really do, and yeah, we got a butterfly up now on the PL, so he has massive. He has reached critical mass now. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> <laughs> and like in this stage, like all you're doing is like talking a bunch of bullshit because there's nothing you can do in this situation but try to get a pick off. Yeah. And I think they're just genuinely confused right now. Yep. It's that moment of true desperation and looking for an answer that maybe it's not there. Sometimes you. Sometimes you can't put a square peg into a circular opening. Sometimes All they have to do, all right, here's here's the game plan that can work for them. They need to get bots on Weaver. They need to get an Aegis on him. They need Weaver to push out top lane, bottom lane a little bit, go straight down mid, hope to get the throne. That is their play right here. And if they can successfully get a few kills while going down mid, while the lanes are pushed out because Weaver pushed them, then they have to go for a throne race. They're going to lose all their buildings, but they just have to get kills inside the base with the Aegis and go for the throne. They're going to need a Desolator up as well. So be the last stand. They just have to go. They know they're in the pit. Let's see if Mike can find himself a target. He's right there with him. He's taking the long road around looking for someone. Who's going to be the target? They're going to try to TP out. There's a Flame Break to ruin it again. That's the second time he's done that to them. And they have to just hoof it and look back at the base. Ush, chopping wood. Angel comes in. Using his coil, trying to do what little he can, but he's orchided out. And the illusion's going to be more than enough to clean that up. Oh, no, actually, still standing a little bit. Thought the illusions would last a little bit longer. But the rest having to look uh, right, brought right back in. Down go the wards again. And this rack's going to be That's an shambles. Ags, right? Yep. That Ag's damage is ridiculous on yep. Shadow Shaman. He's going to die on Treant. Yep. Oh, very close. He just got the heal off. And behind it, we can see the fight continuing to rage as they did manage to pick off Ewo. Cinderel going to be shackled, and he'll go down as well. Angel and Jericho have to run. Angel phase shifts away from the Spear and Lance. Only a little bit of time there, trying to time it upright. Still ends up dropping. This is going to be that, I do believe, my friend. They're chasing him back to the well, trying to force staff to safety. Whitebeard overextending a bit, perhaps. But that's going to be... Mega creeps most likely as the tier three falls in mid. Nothing still standing in that bottom lane. There's buybacks on both sides. The profits coming back in. Ewo buys back for what could be the last time. And looks like they might be able to clear things out a little bit for a moment, but in all practicality, this one's done. Yeah, I mean they're just chewing at their base slowly, and there's Daya's there's nothing they can really do about at this attack. point. Like, I, I keep saying that, but it's just it is what it is. Yep. There's, there's just nothing they can do. It's the only thing they can do is hope Snow makes a mistake, but that's not them really doing anything. <laughs> At this point, even if they're they, just praying right now. Even if they make a mistake, when you have when you have this much split push, you have a Phantom Lancer with boots of travel, and yeah, you have two racks down. Even even if they ran up and fed five, <laughs> I don't think it would matter. Like they could not get across the map fast enough yeah. to actually make a difference. They need to feed like five five times in a row. <laughs> five five <laughs> di five diebacks. <laughs> yeah. And Rose still standing, by the way. And looks like uh, Snow's not happy about that. Going one-on-one -on -one with the big guy. Whitebeard back in. Has his wards up in eight seconds. And they're moving in for a flank. And looks like they're trying to smoke in Roche. Pure desperation. Yeah, and Whitebeard just going to go back to a mid racks right now. And Mega Creep's coming soon. And Snow, space created. As that happens, like you said, there goes one. They're teleporting back as quick as they can. Whitebeard is just going to sell out on it, I think. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. Can't kill the wards fast enough. That's Megas. Illuminate connects. And it's the siege is on. Mike finds himself Sidereal. Angel there trying to help out. Whitebeard does end up dying, but Mike deploys the BKB. He'll end up making it away safely. And now, honestly, at this point, they lack so they lack yeah. AOE to the point that the creeps can honestly win this game. What's really sad for me to see is Union Gaming is a team that loves to play the late game. Yep. And for some reason, they drafted a lineup that is so mid-game centric. It's yep. unbelievable. It does not feel like their play style at all. So, 
I don't know. It feels like they're really playing out of their comfort zone. It may be nerves. And another thing I want to note as well is like, it seems like if you watch the TI finals as well, when the pressure is on and stakes are high, it seems like Rat Dodo's the go-to. <laughs> well, well, it makes sense, man. Like, when you think about Rat Dodo, what can you do? You you sit back and you play back. It's fairly easy to execute yeah, if you have the right free. composition. Right. <laughs> but it puts an immense amount of stress on your opponents because if they misread it, mm -hmm. then suddenly they've lost not just a, a hero. They didn't give up a kill or two. Mm -hmm. They end up losing towers. They end up losing yes. racks. They end up losing Roshan. And uh, it makes sense. And uh, <laughs> was that what you think we can look forward to at TI? <laughs> just two teams trying to rat each other out. No one ever <laughs> fighting ever. Nothing but creeps. Um, maybe when the high, high pressure games get there, <laughs> but group stages and early stages while teams have a shot, they'll probably still play their own game, yeah. but this seems to be like a go-to when there's a lot on the line. It's taking all five from Union just to keep the tier fours up at this point. And they're literally just playing just with tears in their eyes right yeah, now. They have to be. But, you know, it's what, you know, I'll be the first to say it, maybe not the first, but... Even though they're certainly not going to be walking away with the win here, and even though they're not going as deep and as far as they wish they, uh, they could, they have nothing to be ashamed of whatsoever. They came into this qualifier and surprised a lot of people, and they're now on the radar. And we're going to see this begin to wind itself down. Last stand. Tier 4s are gone. BKB's up. Ewo about to die for the last time. He, well, I, never mind. I forgot he had an Aegis. Aegis popped. He'll be back up, but really not a whole lot that can be done as the Ancient is now the number one target. It's down to a quarter health. Down to about a third. The wards are on it, and that's that. Union Gaming, who shocked many across the world and making it here at all, could not take the next step. Sneaky Knicks Assassins, their experience, their talent, a little too much to overcome. But once again, I hope, and as much as hard as this has to be and as much as it has to hurt, that Union, at least in a couple of days when you have time to shake it off, mm -hmm. is able to look back and be proud of what they put together here. South America in general has made tremendous leaps forward in the Dota scene. Yeah. Like, they have been... Before, there was kind of a joke. They weren't... In, I don't think many teams were invited at all. No. Like, the last TI qualifiers. Now we've got South American teams, like, like beating other teams in North America pretty mm -hmm. easily, and we've got some in the top four now. So the next year, I'm expecting a lot from them. Yep, yeah, and, 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 and it's been a storyline that's developed across, you know, for weeks now is just how much this means, not just to these teams and these players, but to their fans and to South American esports fans of all types, not just right. even Dota. And that was something like on uh, our last episode of Reporter we did before we flew down here. I uh, had a chance. We actually did a, 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 we did a, uh, a call in with Smash from, uh, from Revenge. And we actually had to have a translator because he didn't speak English. And, it, you know, it was a great interview and all that. We talked a lot about this. It was with him and with Mystico. But what really, really shocked me in a good way was the follow-up, and whenever we did the open lines, every caller just ringing off the hook, people from South America talking about how much these players and these teams and this qualifier in particular means to them. And, again, it, you know, the Cinderella story would have been Union Gaming goes to Seattle. Yeah. The slipper, doesn't fit, <laughs> slipper doesn't fit this time, but wow. I really hope everyone can walk away from this with their heads held high and, and uh, feeling that pride that they very well earned with this run. It's a great sign of what's to come for the South yeah. American Dota scene, really. Um, I mean, I was even I was over in the lounge watching the streams and just checking out the streams, and, and like even the Spanish stream was going crazy with all the viewers there. It was like the mm. first time I've seen like something like fifteen thousand viewers just on the Spanish stream alone. That's awesome, and yeah. I'm just like, that's insane. Like that's that's major. That's the Dota two scene is just blowing up in South America right now. It's, yeah. it's huge there. It's a lot of fun for the guys, of course, in Union Gaming. They came very far, obviously, and it's a bit rough, but you know. I they've been playing so well coming into this tournament right now. I think that this was a great result for them. Obviously, the big story would have been revenge getting in as well, but Union, that's the Cinderella story, and they go out here. But uh, well played series. They go down to Red Dota. Unfortunately, it's tough to <laughs> it's tough to lose to that. But yeah, yeah, that's always the most frustrating way to lose a game. After you just have this sour taste in your mouth after yeah. you lost. You're just like, oh, couldn't we have just lost to like, anything else? Like you'd rather get yeah. stomped in like 15, 20 minutes than that. Really? I don't know. Yeah, you would. Yes. Yeah. It's anything but that. But um, for we've for got our final three now though, yeah. well, we've got the the three big American the teams who expected to be in the top three and they are guaranteed top two. Mm -hmm. Snar versus Liquid tomorrow. Snar have had a much bumpier road to get there, even dropping a game to Union. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. What, what do you think of Snar's chances moving forward? Um, I still give. Like, Liquid's been really shaky. I mean, yeah. they've, they're they on a four-game loss right now. Right. So That's a four-game losing streak. So they're probably not feeling too good. And they just came off... I mean, Snarl's got to be feeling good now. I mean, it wasn't the most convincing wins ever, but they got the job done. So I think it's going to be a fairly equal matchup, but I'm yes. still going to give it to Liquid 2-1.
Mott, what about what do you? I gotta give it to Sna. I just love yeah. watching them. I love watching their play style. I I think Sna and Usher are just two great up and coming players that nice. I've I've had a lot of fun watching. And mm. I think it's gonna be a really 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 close series. I think, but I think they'll. I mean, with all that's on the line for Fluff and Ix Mike as well, I think that's gonna their hearts gonna be at it for the victory. I'm I'm with Mott. I think they're. I think that. What's going on with Liquid right now is they've got a lot of things you know that happened yesterday really not worth talking about. But Snaw's been drafting very well. We've talked back at the casting couch or the lounge couch about how Liquid's been very narrowly defined and what has given them success and what hasn't. And at this point, Snaw's a team who's going to be able to zero in on that. I feel like they're drafting well to begin with. Mm -hmm. And there is that emotional component, yeah. fluff and stuff coming back, IX Mike coming back. And I don't know. like it's To me, it's the wrong time to be bottoming out, as Pierce said. They've mm -hmm. lost four, and that's got to be tough. With yes, you've you've already you're you're in this position where it's either live up to your expectations, which is what's expected of you. So it's going to be like, oh well, they did what they should. But the pressure of if you lose and don't go, the reaction that's going yes. that everyone's going to have is going to be tremendously larger than if they actually win. Yeah, it was like we talked about a bit at the end of yesterday. For Liquid, it's like not even just beating Snar. They're they're going to be disappointed with anything apart from first place. Yeah, and that, that's to them. To me, Liquid's a team that's not even focused right now. Um, mm. for a team like Snar. They've just got one thing that they have to worry about, which is winning the match and trying to get to TI4. For Liquid, there's so much going on mm -hmm. uh, with the team and just with all, all they've had to deal with that. They are not just focused on getting to right. TI, it feels like. Yep. It's, it's I'm a, actually going to take my prediction back and say Liquid's going to win 2-0. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Doubling down on it, man. Right. Yeah. You believe in your, your boy Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. I think it, I, I'm going to... I just... It makes me... F I feel like it's going to be 2-0. Okay. So. Okay. I think Sna... I, I think Liquid's the better team. I just wonder how yeah. focused Liquid yeah. will be I think they'll tomorrow. be close games, but... Yeah. I still have to give it to yeah. Liquid. Uh, it's, it's always different. I feel like this series here, now we're a bit thrown off, but also because they're versing Uni, who they probably don't know as well. I feel like they're going to know Liquid a bit better, like with, with drafts, picks. Union, they were like, what do we need to pick? What do we need to ban against these guys? As for right. Liquid, both teams know each other much better. Right. Yeah. I mean, Snaw knows Liquid pretty yeah. well, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you say Liquid know, like, Snaw? I mean, you've seen to enough. A, to yeah. a degree, they, did, they were teammates before, yeah. so they do know how each other thinks. So yeah. it, it'll be some mind games, I think, in these matches. A they've lot of mind games. They've seen enough Snaw games to know, like, the Disruptor, the Enchantress. Right. They just they know how Fluff for. thinks, too, and Mike. Yeah. I mean, TC yeah. played on a team with them, but vice versa as well. So okay. it's going to be all about the mind games. All right. Well, uh, those uh, those two games are gonna be tomorrow. Uh, we've got a two a best of three as well as a best of five finals day tomorrow. Day four, we've got our loser bracket final between Snar as well as Team Liquid. That kicks off at nine a.m. Pacific time, which is uh, six p.m. European time for <laughs> European viewers. Yep, sounds that. right. Sounds right. We're gonna go with that. And uh, then we have the best of five grand finals, which is three and a half hours after that uh, scheduled to start. So that'll be right after, which will be NAR versus the winner of that one, guys. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a pretty quick day for us. It really has, yeah. it, especially okay. compared to the last two, man. It's yeah. like rolled in, <laughs> yeah. grab a monster, have a burger, and, yeah. and cast some dough. We're done. We're yeah. good. I mean, even with the three game best of three series. So, exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Um, you guys Can't on the complain. stream, if you want to uh, support our, our fellow casters here, at AC on Twitter, at Fear Dota, yeah. at Mort Dota 2. He's also been observing for us today, so a big thanks to Mort for yes. uh, helping out, doing a fantastic job, job there. Thank you. Thank you. Haven't needed to flame you, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how you measure a good observer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like sweating over there yeah. sometimes. Like I help it on this this kill. Jeez, guys. Mm. It's one of the. It's it's a. I was surprised by how much you have to focus when you're observing. Yeah, it's you can't like you can't mentally take the off. Mm. You like you have to really like key in, and you also mm. have to listen to the guys and make sure yeah. like if they ask you to bring something up, you got to be on the spot yeah. with it. So. Yeah. yeah, you did a great job with that, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. And a uh, big thanks to our production guys, uh, Roland as well as K Poptosis, uh, mm -hmm. manning the stuff over there. But guys, we're going to be back tomorrow, 9 a.m., bright and early for our loser bracket final. So tune in there. We're the NA Hub. This is the TI4 qualifiers presented by Monster, and we're done for today. See you guys tomorrow.